In this video, I want to discuss a question that I actually got from a subscriber of the channel. And the question ultimately was, what other ways can you utilize your home until you can actually have it officially licensed by the state that you're currently in? So I am going to discuss the different ways and what you can actually do and what other individuals that I have spoken to have done in the past. And hopefully this will help alleviate a lot of the expenses that you are occurring while you're waiting to get your facility license. So if you're interested, make sure to stick around. What is going on everyone? I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Serge. Welcome to the channel. To all my reoccurring viewers, thank you so much for all the love and support that each and every single one of you have shown me. And if you have not yet, make sure to go check out Legion Assisted Living Academy dot com where i teach how to start your own facility from a to z also if you're interested on booking a one-on-one -on -one mentorship call with myself for any additional questions that you may have feel free to do that in the link in the description of this video or at legion assisted living academy Dot com. I also do offer the Proforma template that you can utilize. Also any uh, documentation that you may use for your operations. I do sell that as well and you can find it all there. Also, if you are a passive investor or a limited partner who is looking to passively invest in this space of assisted living, behavioral health, transitional housing, etc reach out to us at valleyaleftventures.com. Feel free to also go check us out at, on Instagram at valleyaleftventures as well. And if you're an operator looking to potentially expand your operations or look to do some type of lease back or even sell your facility, feel free to reach out to us at valleyaleftventures.com. And with all the housekeeping out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of this video. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the question here and I'm gonna read it out loud for you all. But the question was, uh, thank you for answering this question. This was probably the biggest question on my mind. Have you heard of other ways the house could be used for, for a while? while waiting for a licensing, but after the inspection. And so there's kind of a two question within a question here, but I'm gonna answer the first question of what you could do while you're waiting to get your facility licensed. And so one of the things to keep in mind, you're gonna to want to make sure you look into the different state regulations of what you're able to do. And for instance, Texas would prefer that you go ahead and place three residents into your home before they come out and inspect the facility and give you the official license. And the reason why they prefer that you have three residents in your home is that they can already start seeing if you have everything in place, such as your policies and procedures, all your operational documentation, such as your Mars, ADLs, uh, everything that it goes into operating your facility, which again, you can go check out at legionassistedlivingacademy.com. And so when they come do that on-site inspection, they can go right away, start looking at maybe just one chart and one residence chart and see if you're doing everything properly from documenting to making sure that you have all the orders from the doctors and making sure that you are putting everything together in that chart properly and that you are meeting the state requirements as far as the operational documentation goes and also that it's matching up to your policies and procedures that you have in place. Also, these are SOAPs, which is standard operating procedures. Those are the same things when it comes to PMP and SOPs. Again, they're the same thing within this residential assisted living space. But regardless though, in the state of Texas, they will allow you to have that even uh, you even if you're not officially licensed, right? Technically, it would be in, in an unofficial capacity with the intent that you're gonna get licensed, right? And so you can do that while you're waiting for licensing. And so you can start generating leads, start generating some revenue uh, while you wait. And that really helps operators as well uh, and so for the state of Texas, that is allowed to do. Now in the state of Arizona and other states like California, Oregon, Washington, Florida, et cetera, a lot of these states typically will want you to have 
one to two bedrooms set up. You don't need to have every single bedroom set up and they want the home to be completely vacant, nobody there, including residents. If you were living in the home prior, everything's gotta be out, everything's gotta be set up, at least one to two bedrooms, like I mentioned, and that way they can come in, do the initial on-site inspection of the facility. Once they have all the applications and everything from you approved, they will look at all this. They don't want any residents in there. They don't want anybody in there. If anybody is caught in there, you will be fine for every day that that resident was in your home. So if you do plan on having one to two residents on an unofficial capacity, make sure that they're not in the home. It's recommended that you don't even do that in these states at all. Uh, and so with that being said, what can you do if you, your state does not allow you to have any residents in your home? And what I've seen a lot of people actually do is they'll either short term rent their home out into until they know what the exact date of their initial inspection is going to be or they'll do a midterm rental. Right. But typically short term renting is a good way to go when you have your home all set up. And yes, you're not gonna be generating, you're not gonna have all these amenities. It's not set up to be a short-term rental per se, right? These amenities are mainly gonna be for residents and not for uh, people to come and spend on vacation there, right? And so you wanna keep that in mind when you have your facility. Uh, another thing that you can start doing is what I've also seen is pad split. And this is where you can rent from a uh, room to room, right? Each room would be separately rented out on a month to month basis to separate individuals. And again, pad split is a great way to just utilize those single full beds that you're most likely going to be using for residents. I know a lot of people are going to say, don't use the same mattresses, don't use the same sheets, make sure you get all new stuff for when the new residents come in and you can do that and i suggest that you do that as well right you don't know what all those other previous individuals who are renting that room could have had right and you don't want anything to be spread or even allow a resident to catch from previous people that were renting out that room so that's a really great great way to go if you are looking to just make some additional revenue and not essentially be carrying the costs until you get licensed because a lot of the times in certain states it can take anywhere from three six to 12 months to even get licensed right and here in the state of arizona it takes about three months from start to finish to get licensed and that is if they don't kick anything back and say that you need to send additional things in but for the most part, it can take from three to six months, all said and done here in the state of Arizona. Other states like California, it can take anywhere from eight to 12 months. And there are other states, depending on what type of license you're trying to go for, that it can take a lot longer, right? Depending if you're gonna go and get contracted with Medicaid and that is gonna be allow you to be able to bill for Medicaid and allow that source of revenue to start working, right? If you're not going down the private pay route, it could take even longer. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about actually utilizing your home, being able to minimize the carrying costs that it's gonna take to be able to get to the point where you eventually get licensed. So to the individual that actually posed that question, hopefully this helps. And then someone out, the second part to his question really was, what about after the inspection, right? After the inspection's done, they typically have the license given to you right away. You don't have to wait much longer. Typically it's about seven to 14 days that they give you the initial license, but they will tell you that for the most part, you can start operating once they've approved you and you've passed your initial on-site inspection and you can start marketing and taking residents into your home and so the official license comes where you have to hang it on your wall so they typically allow you once they approve you for your on-site inspection and you pass that so you don't need to do any of this after you you get your inspection once your inspection's done and you've passed and it's been approved you should start taking residents in right away you should start incorporating it and also start taking that time to train your staff right 
as new residents come in, you want to make sure that they understand the admission process, that they understand really the procedures of getting someone, you know, into your home, what it all takes to get them in on move in day and what that all looks like. So you want to start training them for when that comes. And then when you get your first resident, you ultimately are going to want to be there as the owner, as the manager, and also your staff to be able to welcome them, to be able to get them settled in, to reassure the residents and the family that everything is gonna be okay. Typically, your first resident is always gonna be the hardest because you're gonna be essentially the new facility. No, you have no type of track record. You have, uh, no one has any idea if your care is subpar or really great or just really terrible. No one really knows. So the first resident is really gonna, the family, typically is gonna take a chance on you and put a lot of trust that you're gonna do really well with them. And so you should over deliver and always make it about the resident, always tell your staff and also remind yourself that they're ultimately your boss, right? They're the ones that are gonna tell you if they, if they love the facility or if they don't. And if they don't, they you know could possibly move out and go to a different facility. And that may happen at some point while you're running your facility. So I hope that this video helped any of you that are out there looking to potentially get licensed um, and you have a home that's just kind of sitting vacant, you don't know what to do with it. Hopefully this provides you guys some insight of what you can do depending on the states that you're in or the state that you're in that you're gonna be opening up your facility. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and also make sure to subscribe. Go check out Legion Assisted Living Academy Dot com. Also make sure to go check us out at Valley ALF Ventures. And now with all that being said, I will talk to you all in the next one. God bless.